Hey guys, last where you can hear sign into the DMs of your mind with a tutorial today on how to reform your religion in Crusader Kings 3. This is something I've seen a lot of people ask about on YouTube and luckily for all of us, the mechanics to do this are much easier than they were in Crusader Kings 2. And so the two requirements to reform your barbarian faith or your unreformed faith is as follows. You must hold at least three holy sites of your respective religion. You must have a certain amount of piety to change in. Typically it's about 4,000 piety, but I'll go into ways as to how you can reduce this. Now, if you're an experienced veteran of Crusader Kings 2 like myself, you will realize that there's one major component that's missing here that was in the old one, and that is moral authority. Luckily for us, that is something that was dropped in Crusader Kings 3 and was replaced with fervor, a much more easy mechanic to understand and one that is more balanced and also not a prerequisite to reform. Now, even though reforming a faith is relatively easier in Crusader Kings 3, it does not make it a walk in the park. For this tutorial, I picked the Kushite religion in Middle Africa to do this. I thought it would be kind of a cool narrative to basically restore the ancient Egyptian religion or branch of it to its old homeland. Now, my first focus in my Kushite reformation is to gain at least three holy sites that belong to it. I can see that they are on my map by clicking my religion map mode and see that all of them are relatively close. The cool thing in Crusader Kings 3 is that having these holy sites now also give you passive bonuses. You know, additions to your stewardish, stewardish ship skill, your diplomacy skill, things like that. The one thing to note here is with tribal governments and unreformed religions, your kingdom is always going to be in a very volatile place, especially when power passes from the old king to the new king. And so what you're going to want to do when you have one of these new kings is to play a very aggressive land grabbing strategy and take up as much land as possible, ensuring that the holy sites stay within your borders no matter what the cost. For this part, I recommend focusing on stewardship and having a strong enough king take as much land as possible while he is relatively young so he can focus on gaining piety after all these conquests. All right, we got our three pretty holy sites and it's now time to focus on gaining piety. So gaining 4,000 piety in a single king's life or queen is not impossible, but it can be tough. And if you follow my advice about taking one single king and grabbing all of this land, he's probably now getting kind of old and the 4,000 piety can sometimes take a whole lifetime to grab. So what I recommend instead is to focus on the learning trees, specifically looking at the theology focus and then going down the theologian. There's a specific achievement or a specific um, point you can put into, which is for profit. This The biggest thing here is that faith creation and reformation costs suddenly dip by 50%. That's right, from 4,000 piety points to 2,000 piety points. This makes it a whole lot easier. At this point, your king might already have that. So that is definitely one thing to look into. The other thing is to make sure you're going on pilgrimages to get as much piety that way. Also to just be in some kind of learning lifestyle focus so you are getting those incremental piety points, but definitely go for theology if you're looking to do this. Now, if you follow my advice, you're probably well on your way to being able to get it. And you'll join, you know, the under 10% of Crusader Kings 3 owners who have actually reformed a faith. And, you know, this is also what is one of the major cornerstones of being able to convert your tribal holdings into a feudal. That's a different tutorial for a different time. But that it's, that's it. After that, you can do it and you're pretty much good to go. Um, doesn't have as much of a change as it did in Crusader Kings 2, um, but it's still something that is cool to do. You still need it to turn from tribal to feudal. Um, so it's a fun thing to try out. Highly recommend it. But that's it, uh, that's it for the tutorial. And so thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments in below. If you liked what you saw, please hit that like button. If you want me to do any tutorials on any other mechanics or aspects of Crusader Kings 3, please let me know. Um, I'm still kind of learning it myself. I, I picked it up a while ago, but I'm really getting into it now. So happy to walk through anything that you guys are looking for me to do. And thanks guys. Um, as always, take it easy.